tonight, the Kobe case. In recent weeks, the country has been transfixed by the highly publicized rape case of Kobe Bryant. Tonight, we'll examine how this case may evolve as it goes forward, both in and out of a court of law. We'll explore potential courtroom strategies through the eyes of defense attorneys and prosecutors, as well as a forensic expert and a jury trial consultant. We'll also speak with journalists and a media analyst who will explain how both sides of the case are trying to win the hearts and minds of the public. Finally, we'll hear from people who know Kobe Bryant, including Bryant himself. We'll find out who this angelic-looking young man accused of such a vicious crime really is. Colorado has some of the toughest sexual offense laws on the books. Bryant has hired a legal team who specialize in high-profile cases, attorneys Hal Haddon and Pamela Mackey. Ms. Mackey and Mr. Haddon are some of the very best defense attorneys in the entire state, if not the Rocky Mountain region. Uh, very skilled, very ethical in their practice, uh, powerful. According to John Pinot, a Colorado defense attorney and a law school classmate of District Attorney Mark Hurlbert, if the DA is going to go forward with the trial, he will not be going it alone. He has the entire resources of the uh, county behind him. He has the resources and the assistance of the district attorneys across the state of Colorado, and that's a formidable uh, combination. He's up to the task, I think. The battle has begun for both sides of this legal war. A preliminary hearing is a, a point where the state or the people have to prove uh, by a preponderance of the evidence that there's probable cause. I believe that the way we handle sex offenders in this state will be the laughing stock of the criminal justice system in 50 years and 100 years, just the way we've treated uh, witches in uh, Plymouth. We'll have to um, remove his pants at least down to his knees while he's in this chair so that he can place the gauge on. Bryant will then be shown videotapes with provocative images while listening to 22 graphic true life stories ranging from sexual assault on children to date rape, to sexual torture. The test and its impact on sentencing has caused a firestorm. As I understand it, what it tests for is a response. A response is far different than uh, indicating that someone would go through with a crime. Anybody who was a male in high school knows that the penis responds sometimes with, for no reason at all. I mean, you don't even know why it's doing what it's doing. And yet, in the plumismograph test, those types of responses indicate some kind of deviance. Probation can't be terminated any earlier than 20 years, so he's got probation for life. As one of the many terms of probation, Bryant would undergo a polygraph test and have to admit his guilt or suffer the consequences. If you don't admit the crime after six months of probation, you're revoked, sent back to the judge because, you still, because you're saying that you didn't do it, and you're sent to prison. Legal experts predict that the trial will not take place until the very earliest next spring of 2004. Kobe Bryant may have the opportunity to play out the NBA season, possibly leading the LA Lakers to another title. Meanwhile, his accuser will try to move on with her life, which won't be easy. In recent weeks, she has seen her home burglarized and has received a number of death threats. One man has even been arrested for offering to kill the young woman for $3 million. And according to our legal experts, the Bryant defense team will be working overtime to uncover any information that can be used against her in court. I'm Bill Curtis. Good night.